Honestly, hey, Jelani Tavai's got a new home. Anyone want to guess who I got, picked them up? I got I, one guess for I you. I know, so I won't, I won't spoil it. Go ahead, it. Ryan. Is it Matt Patricia's New England Patriots? <laughs> That's it. There ding, it ding, is. ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and if you remember, go back a couple of draft nights, and uh, ESPN was scrambling when the Lions chose him with the 43rd pick. NFL Network, no one had any video or tape on him. Uh, they went to the commercial. They That's because the rumor was the Patriots really liked him. Uh -oh. So the Lions said, we better take this guy. Yeah. So now he's back where he belongs with Kyle Van Noy and the New England Patriots. Good. They can have Matt Patricia and Jelani <laughs> to buy. And, and really, uh, that's – I don't even know what to say about that. I mean, the, the Lions clearly didn't know what they were doing then. And if this is a got Matt Patricia's fingerprints all over it, he certainly doesn't have any idea what he's doing now. Yeah, you know, but you know, Bill Belichick and that defense. You know, whether you want to try to give the credit to Matt Patricia, it's Bill Belichick's defense. It, they don't necessarily need guys that are high octane, that are high uh, athletic guys, that are high in the athletic department. You've talked about how we've seen Jalen Savai on film, and he just didn't look like he could get Can't it play. done. He just looked he looked out of out of sorts, and he looked like he was lost in space. Well, Bill Belichick and Patricia, I guarantee you they can take that and formulate that to something in their system and make it work. You see what they did with Kyle Van Noy. He'll, he'll work. They'll pluck him somewhere, and he'll, he'll be happy to have a job, and it's in New England. In fairness, Maz, I believe he was signed to the practice squad. He is. So he wasn't signed to the active 53-man right roster. Now. Will he ultimately have a shot to play for them? Perhaps. I think so. I think so. Perhaps. He listens. You know, they told him to come back. We want you to lose 25 pounds. He's a guy that will do what you tell him. Like, he's not a guy that causes any issues. He'll do exactly what you tell him. So that's a good sign. That's one of those, you know, automatic type of robotic type of uh, New England Patriots type players that, you know, have success. So that bodes well for him. You know, how many guys in the – you know, Jelani Tavai was taking number 43 overall, oh right? I mean, Don't in, even in, start. And that was in the 2019 draft. That wasn't in the 2017 draft. That was in the 2019 draft. Not even on an active NFL roster. How many guys, I, I don't know, I wish I would have thought of this question that I'm about to ask <laughs> before the show, yeah. but how many guys take it in the top 50 of any draft is pretty much out of the league? In the, after two years? After a year and a half. You know, yeah. after a year and a half. How many guys are out of the league to where no other team in the NFL even wants a chance on you? I, I don't consider, look, there's a lot of guys signed to practice squads. Um, I, I don't consider the New England Patriots putting Tavai on the 53-man roster. I mean, clear nobody wanted him. Not one of the 32 teams wanted him. This is a, kind of a... a I, I, what's the word I'm looking for? This is just kind of like, like a, an attaboy. Yeah, come on hey, over hey, here. Come on over hey, here. Come on just, over. Yeah, it's one of those things, and, and this may be a hot take. This may be interesting, Ryan. Um, I feel like the second-round pick for most teams is the pick that they're pretty sure on. I feel like it's the pick that either something slipped to them and they're excited, or it's pretty much who they were going to draft anyway. I think the first-round pick, you either hope you got the right guy or maybe you didn't get the right guy and you're nervous. I think that second-round guy is the guy that you know you were going to get. Or, like I said, someone slips to you and you're like, oh, man, we got him. So to for the second-round pick, to disappear after a year and a half, as you said, yeah, that's that's a red flag. But luckily, that's not the uh, franchise and that's not the organization and that we're under now with Dan right. Campbell and Brad Holmes. Well, there's no doubt about it. And I think for the Lions, forget about the second round. <laughs> yeah, you got to worry about the first round. Ooh. I mean, if you look at the last two first round picks for this team in Jeff Okuda and Panay Sewell, uh, look. And I've said it before, I'm not going to freak out about Sewell just yet, but is there any indication to you that uh, says, oh, man, Okuda, going to be a great player. Sewell, oh, he's totally got it. I mean, I think he's got it. Yeah. I hope he's got it. But there isn't one, <laughs> one at, at zero points throughout right. this preseason where I'm like, okay, that's the guy that they picked. I, I, at least a flash. He hasn't played in two years. Yeah, <laughs> year and a half, whatever the hell it is. It is. He could be a, an all pro. They they changed the whole guy's life around. Hey, go play on the other side. Change your entire life around. No, I get it. Yeah, I think but he's gonna have a chance to prove who he is. I still say, obviously, it was the wrong pick at that time. That's it, my opinion. 
Also, you know, I, I feel as though Matt Patricia, uh, not Matt Patricia, Dan Campbell is getting rid of every sign of Matt Patricia. I think, like, getting rid of Jelani Tavai was one of those last, like, all right, cool. We're, get, we're getting rid of all Matt Patricia's guys. Like, when coaches come in a lot of times, they want their guys. Like, you hear their guy, my guy, he wasn't my guy. He has a chance from a team that was really bad last year and a couple years before that to just get rid of everything that reminds them of that past. So I think that's one of those moves. And as it relates to Okuda and Panay Sul, like, like Matt said, the big guy over there, Panay hasn't played in a year and a half, and he's moved sides. They don't move you to another side because they don't think you can play. They move you to another side when they know that this is the best spot for you. This is where we know you're going to operate best. We talked about you being an all-pro potentially when we drafted you. This is where we think you're going to have that all-pro type of career. Career. So I'm excited about that. And Jeff Okuda in the house, Aaron Glenn. Aaron Glenn is a guy that can get on him. Aaron Glenn is a guy that can help him see his potential. I'm excited about that as well. So let's just watch these things play out over the next four weeks. You know, we can come back and start talking about what do we see change. You know, we see it happen in hockey. We see it happen in baseball. We see it a lot in the NBA. Just look at the Detroit Pistons in how young they are. The way that the, the Detroit Lions constructed their roster – so far, and again, there's going to be a million more changes potentially. But uh, their 53 man roster that they submitted to the league, we got to yesterday. talk about that some. A little I bit. mean, how young are these guys? Let me put up some some tweets. Uh, it's some the cuts second youngest in the league, right? Wow, the second youngest I mean, behind the Jets. The Bears are the oldest. Yeah, you you will you are hard pressed to find many uh, totally young teams like yeah. this. So the roster cuts uh, have come and gone. Woo. This is from Dave Burkett on Twitter. He says this is wild. The Lions have six cornerbacks on their 53 man roster. All 25 or younger, two are undrafted free agents, another is a rookie, a fourth year in in a in a fourth in year two, and a converted safety two weeks ago. Starters are Jeff Akuda, second round, second year, Amani Owarie, a third year player, and AJ Parker, undrafted free agent. That's uh, interesting. That's your guy. Yeah, that's my guy. I, <laughs> I, I like uh, <laughs> I like I like Parker a lot. Undrafted guy, but this is an extremely young football team. If you look at the offensive line, extremely young football team. I mean, yeah. Uh, when I when I look at that, I I think of and I think I've said this before. I think of the Seattle Seahawks. I think of what Brian Schneider and Pete Carroll were able to do out there. They drafted their way into the playoffs and to consistency and to the Legion of Boom. Like, if you look at the Legion of Boom, those were all guys that were drafted by the Seattle Seahawks. You know, you look at the other side of the ball, they drafted Russell Wilson. They drafted Russell Okun, uh, the, the all the all pro and uh, pro Bowl left tackle. That's what they did. And then they merged it with a couple of old, older players. They bought in for free agency. That's what they're trying to do here. And here's a, here's a, a sample size uh, prediction. Omani Arwarie of Penn State, I was very high on him. Omani is a tremendous athlete. I thought he should have been a first-round draft pick, but he didn't test necessarily that well. Omani is going to be a beast. He's going to be a guy that's going to establish himself. So I'm very excited with that. Uh, the pick. I mean, him being on the team and playing, like I said, under Aaron Glenn, who was an extremely good co a good player for the New York Jets for years. We're going to take a break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to get into some more Lions talk. And I have a question for you. Uh, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a statement about the Lions rebound to one aspect of the rebuild that I think is because of it it's going to take longer uh, want to get into that and um, just your overall thoughts on where this franchise is going they have no kickers but they did get a kicker today Maz they did sign a oh, kicker thank today you. thankfully I, I know you were really upset about that yesterday all that and more is this going to be a kicking topic day Jay Feely <laughs> in hour number two you're listening to Armani and Edwards Woodward Sports Network